So regardless of where the hamstring injury is or where the bruising is, I would always orientate myself by starting at the knee and working your way up. And the easiest place to identify hamstrings is to start medially. Most people are familiar with looking for Baker cysts if you've studied knee ultrasound. So this is our semimembranosis and the little semitendinosis that sits on top. So we're about a hand span above the knee crease to see that. Um, you might be familiar with what it looks like in long. So semimem is this big triangular one and that's semitendon on the top. So once you've found them, hamstrings are very easy. There's obviously only three hamstrings, so there's only three to know. The two on the medial side are called semi-something, so it's either semi-membranosis or semi-tendinosis, which is the little slender one. So the skinny one at the bottom, the semi-tend, is going to become large at the top. So as we start moving our camera up proximally, you can see it fans out. And then a very characteristic thing happens about two hand spans below this gluteal fold. And it looks like a Venetian blind. So you basically see a little fascia run through it vertically. And it looks like someone's opening a curtain. So there's the curtain. So if I go back down. So from here, right the way over to here, this is semitendinosis. Here's the little Venetian blind. So we're going to run approximately and you'll see that blind effect sort of shift across the muscle. So it's good to pick that. It's the only muscle with something so characteristic. So as we come back down, here it is again, Venetian blind going back. So it's semi tend on both sides of that white fascia. So now that you've found that, we'll follow the semimembranosis. So the membranosis does the reverse. It's big at the bottom, skinny at the top. So this is all membranosis at the moment. And then what it does towards the groin or the crutch, it turns into like a comma shape. So this here is the semimembranosis and it's just flanking semitendinosis over here. So that's semimembranosis and then across behind or more anterior to the semitendinosis, this white fascia here is an aponeurosis and that's actually part of semimembranosis as well. So the higher you go, that comma shape is going to disappear and all you're left with now over here is a tiny little tendon and that's the semimembranosis and it's connected back to where the comma shaped muscle belly was by an aponeurosis. So I'll show you that again. So you've got a big round muscle at the bottom, you follow it up and it starts thinning out starts to turn into a comma shape and then over on the most lateral aspect of it you'll see it converge to form a little tendon and that's semimembranosis and it stays beneath the semitendinosis. Now what we've just fallen on here, this fascia here, this is known as the conjoint tendon. It's sort of an, a vertical echogenic line, sometimes it's a bit S-shaped and that's marking out where our lateral hamstring is merging with the semitendinosis. So laterally, we have one called the biceps femoris. So it's named after the femur. It's called biceps because it's got two heads. It's got a short head and a long head. So if you're on the posterior femur, moving from distal to proximal, you'll see a little line. And the deeper portion here, this is the short head while this one on top, this is the long head. So the long head's hard to see at the bottom. This is all short head. So biceps femoris. So it's the lateral hamstring. And then as we get further up towards the gluteal fold, you'll see the biceps femoris has become small. And this white line is a shared between the lateral hamstring and the medial hamstring. And just beneath that vertical white line is the sciatic nerve. And the other side of that is a ductor magnus. I always find this conjoint tendon really helpful because it basically draws a line down to your sciatic nerve. And if you're going to find a hamstring tear, it's nearly always up flanking that um, conjoint tendon. So as you run down, if that tendon looks thick, you might see that the two fascias have split apart and there's hemorrhage in between the two, yeah. So you just compare that with the other side 
So they're starting now of the semi mem. Now semi mem ends up being the deepest and most lateral tendon of the hamstring origin. So if I go up here, this is the ischium. So this is all conjoint tendon, hamstring origin. The deepest, most anterior and most lateral bit, that's semi mem. So I remember it by the fact that semi mem's medial at the bottom, but lateral at the top. Um, so this is semi mem down here. So you can put it on penetration. And at that point you can sometimes pull out the curved probe. So as we go up, this conjoint tendon is going to become the main hamstring origin. So instead of sliding up, I like to pick up the camera and plonk it about 10 centimetres above the inferior gluteal fold and you, you need a power grip. So now we're at the hamstring origin. We can see the ischium and this is known as the conjoint tendon or the hamstring origin. So towards the medial side, the conjoint tendon is really thin seems to thicken towards the lateral aspect and you can see it sort of slopes around the side. So to get it looking really nice we have to try and rock onto the lateral aspect of our probe and now that top margin of the tendon is sort of a bit more parallel with the probe face. So this is the hamstring origin. Now, so this is conjoint tendon from about here to here and the deepest bit that we start to sort of lose out on resolution this is the semimembranosus origin. So when we turn into longitudinal on the conjoint tendon up here, it'll look like a triangle. Um, and the best picture will be not with your camera sort of really vertical, but sort of coming in from a lateral approach because that tendon, as we know, sort of curves around the lateral side of the shim. So that's our hamstring origin. We could measure it from here to here, but you can make it any you can make it measure anything in long. So the, the more reliable thing to do would be to take a picture like that, and then jump across to the other side and compare the depth here. So in longitudinal, you can sometimes see the semimembranosus this way. So the more medial we are, it's definitely conjoint tendon. As you come laterally and off the side and then angle even more laterally with a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. You can just start to see some fibres here and these are the semimembranosus tendon fibres. So you'll see one tendon on top ending at a little white line and then these fibres under here, these are semimembranosus tendon fibres. Now if we ask our patient to flex the knee so they're lifting the shin off the table slightly Yep, it pulls it tight. So we, we can see conjoint tendon on top, and then these fibres down here are semimembranosus. And as, as they're diving really deep, it's, it's very difficult to image with just a 12.5. So I'll show you what it looks like on a curvy linear. So you can see that's going to be needed in a lot of patients. Uh, so here's conjoint tendon, and then if I come a little bit more lateral, and then angle in and push hard. This is semimembranosus. Okay, so that's just how to identify the various hamstrings, but I'll show you one more thing. This is the sacrotuberous ligament. So from our conjoint tendon, what we're going to do is move about a probe length above the ischium, and then we rotate the top of the camera in towards the sacrum, so that direction there. And we see a little ligament as a superior extension of the hamstring. So this is hamstring origin. So this little ligament running through here is on its way to the sacrum and that's the sacrotuberous ligament. You can see pudendal artery and nerve just under it. So this is sacrotuberous ligament. So we're about a probe span above the ischium angling towards the sacrum. So it's very oblique. So ischium's on the right of the image. And you can just see two parallel white lines marking either side of that sacred tuberous ligament. So you will see high hamstring strains up there, which is why I bring it up. And then it's not always a bilateral appearance if they have a high hamstring origin. So yeah, just, just at the lower end, because you'll see most 
hamstring strains there. And an avulsion, um, by definition, is just where some of the hamstring pulls off the bone. So if you're sitting in transverse looking at the hamstring origin, and you see a little black gap that's occupying, you know, 30% of the tendon, that can still be called an avulsion even though it hasn't ripped a little chunk of bone off with it. It just means it's pulled off the bone. Um, but hamstring origin tear will usually heal provided there's not displacement or, you know, a big chunk of bone that's now displaced away from the ischium. So there's sciatic nerve, there's quadratus femoris there, and if we slide over we hit greater trochanter, so that's all quad fem and sciatic nerve sitting on top, and this is all glute max. So if you go above quad fem, you'll see three little muscles in a row, so we go up, so that's inferior gemelli, it's hypochoic, go up a bit, echogenic stripe, that's obturator internus, go up a bit, back to dark, that's superior gemelli, and above that, sciatic nerves diving in deep. And then any muscle that's above that, in towards the sacrum, so you've got to be close to the sacrum. This triangular muscle here is piriformis. So the, the best way to find piriformis is actually you start at the very top, like right up here on the, just below your sacroiliac joint, and that bony lump there. And you just drop down until that sort of bone disappears and then you angle your probe to point at the greater trochanter. So if you're a centimetre below what they know as the PSIS, then you'll fall on piriformis. So you'll see glute max come a centimetre below, go back up, that's piriformis from there to there.